Hi guys! In this video, we will show you the printer's graphic user interface of the brand new X1 Carbon from Bamboo Lab. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in the previous video, we covered the unboxing, assembly and talked about all the details about the new X1 Carbon 3D printer from Bamboo Lab. If you haven't seen that video yet, check the video description below for the link. In this video, we will cover the printer's graphic user interface. But before we go through all the menus and options of the user interface, let's talk a little bit about the display itself. The display is a 5-inch capacitive and color touch display. The mount where it is installed on allows the display to tilt a bit up or down. At the right side is the memory card slot. It's not very difficult to insert or remove the memory card, but you really need to use your fingernail to push it in just enough for it to lock or release. And this is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon graphic user interface. The main screen shows the different menus at the left and some initial information at the right. The top button allows us to turn the internal light on and off. Then we have the Wi-Fi signal strength indication. Next is the heat bed temperature reading, the nozzle temperature reading and the chamber temperature reading. The four small black squares at the bottom right corner indicate the status of the four slots of the AMS unit. If we enter the second menu, we can see some sub-menus at the top. The first one allows us to control the heat bed temperature, the second one we control the nozzle temperature and the third one is the chamber temperature, which cannot be controlled because there's no heater on the chamber. Next is the printing speed. While the printer is printing, we can change its speed. There are four speeds available. Silent is the slowest and ludicrous is the fastest. We can also turn on and off the part cooling fan and the big auxiliary cooling fan. These fans have a feedback system, which in other words, are equipped with an RPM sensor. With this sensor, the printer knows if the fans are turning correctly and at the correct speed. There are also buttons to move the X and Y axis in 1 and 10 mm steps. At the center is the home button. There's also the Z-axis buttons to raise or lower the bed and the extruder to push or pull filament. An AMS submenu is where we check and enter the filament information on the AMS unit. If we load a filament spool that is not from Bamboo Lab, the printer will not recognize it. So we need to type in the filament manufacturer, filament type, color and nozzle temperatures. One of the bugs on this firmware version is that if you load more filaments, it will lose the setting of the previous ones. It's not that big of a deal, because on the slicer software, you define all this as well. Filaments from Bamboo Lab are equipped with an ID, and the RFID reader on the AMS unit will read that ID when loading the spool. The information of the filament type and filament color is this way automatically loaded. The lines between the filament slots and the print head show which filament is currently loaded. In this menu, we can also check the humidity value inside the AMS unit. But although the sensor is there, the firmware is not yet ready to read the information and show it on the display. There's also an AMS setting menu where we can choose if we want to automatically read the filament's information. 
and a calibration button to calibrate the AMS unit. The third menu is for the printer's calibration. For now, we can only run the mechanical vibration calibration, but the manufacturer is planning to add more calibrations on this menu. The next menu is to choose from where we want to load the files to print and also to select them to start the print. The first one is the cloud. At this time, there are no files available on the cloud. Next is the internal memory. The printer comes equipped with an internal memory loaded with several files ready to print. With this firmware version, there is no option to delete any of these files or to add new files to the internal memory. And then is the memory card. Here we have access to all the files from the memory card. If the files are in 3MF format, we have access to their graphic representation on the display. The next menu will take us to our account. The only way for us to remotely access the printer, either from the cell phone or from the computer slicer software, is through an account with Bamboo Lab. One of the advantages of this is that we can access the printer from anywhere outside our network and receive messages with warnings or status on the cell phone. This screen shows us that we are logged in. In general, we have several options. We can choose the language of the menus. This version only has Chinese and English at the moment. It shows the installed firmware version and also checks if there's any new version available to install. The auto sleep time is the duration of which the display will stay on when not in use. If the display is turned off, we can just tap the screen to turn it back on. The printer also has an on and off button just for the display. Next is the printer's model and serial number. It's also possible to export the log files to the memory card in case we need to troubleshoot something and restore all the settings to the factory's defaults. At the left, we can see the memory cards used and free space. The button to format the card and a button to enable or disable the recordings from the internal camera. The network submenu let us turn the Wi-Fi on and off, shows the currently network being used, other networks found, and the printer's IP address. And this is the last menu. In here we can check all the errors that the printer captured during printing and for the different modules. As you can see, the controller has the fan speed to low error in memory. This error is because the firmware is expecting the full speed from the fan right at the moment when it turns on. This is actually a bug because the fan needs a timeout to be able to reach the set speed. The QR code is a link for Bamboo Labs page with help on this topic. However, this page is not yet available. The other modules are the AMS, the tool head, the LiDAR sensor, and the application processor, which is responsible to run all sorts of applications such as network, interaction, update, and so on. The device self-test button will run a few tests on these modules and check if everything is working correctly. When we select a file to print, we get the indication of the print time, how much filament will be used, the filament type, and the slot on the AMS unit. It also shows all the initial calibrations, and here we can choose which ones we want to run. When selecting Print Now, the screen then starts to show all the steps it takes before starting the print. The model graphic representation is shown at the left. At the bottom we can see the file name, the progress bar, and the pause and stop buttons. And when the print actually starts, we get the astronaut with the thumbs up. And that's it you guys, these are all the menus and options on the graphic user interface of the new X1 Carbon. We hope you liked the video, and don't miss the follow-up videos about the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon on our YouTube channel. And if you missed our first video, don't forget to check the video description for the link. So, 
We will see you guys next time. Bye.